everybody, welcome back to Turtle Queen at the Movies. Um, thank you to all of our subscribers. Thanks for all your questions, your comments, your posts. We really appreciate it. We love you guys. Now let's go see Steve. Oh, Johnny, I wanted to recommend a Judy Garland movie for you, so I thought I'd go with The Harvey Girls, 1945. Now, this one was directed by George Sidney, and it was made on MGM right after Meet Me in St. Louis. This was a very good period for Judy Garland. She had just fallen in love with Vincente Minnelli. She was ending her marriage to David Rose. She'd had an unhappy love affair with Tyrone Power, an unhappy love affair with Joe Mankiewicz, so she was really riding high because Minnelli had put her up there and shown her the talent that she really was and how much she appreciated her. Now, she wasn't too happy about doing another costume movie, but this was a great one. It had a score by Harry Warren and Johnny Mercer, and the main number, which is called The Atchison, Topeka, and the Santa Fe, was given the Oscar as the best song of the year. The The supporting cast was John Hodiak, who had just come off doing Lifeboat with Tallulah Bankhead and went from Tallulah Bankhead to Judy Garland. Well, anyway, he has a nice edge about him, and he always brought to the table a lot more than he needed to. He plays the gambler that she's in love with. Judy plays a waitress for the Harvey Girls, which was an actual restaurant chain that settled in the West and set up good service and a decent restaurant as opposed to the saloons that most of the people were, you know, men were eating in out there. And she's this waitress and, and it's overlooked by Selena Royal, who is one of those nice character actresses. Marjorie Maine is there. On the Atchison, the Pika, and the Santa Fe. As Sid Charisse, they were grooming her. And it also has Virginia O'Brien. Virginia O'Brien was a comedian who could sing like a bird. She was actually pretty, but she always had a face like this and she never changed her expression. She sings a song called the one Wild, wild west. It's mm. wild in the wild, wild west. But the person who steps in with this and gives Judy the most competition in this movie is Angela Lansbury. Angela Lansbury plays the saloon gal. And Angela had just come on the scene in 1944 in Gaslight and in her very first movie and had won an Academy Award nomination. Angela was always cast because she was so smart and she was such a good actress. She was always cast in parts that were much older than herself. And in this one, she is stunning. She plays the saloon girl who is in love with John Hodiak as well and thinks that Judy Garland is, you know, coming on to him and she's not going to have it. What do you want out of Ned Trent? You're in love with him. Listen, you little insignificant. Oh, I may be little, and I suppose I am insignificant. But I must be getting somewhere, my friends and I. They dubbed her, which was really stupid, because she could sing. But she dances, she looks gorgeous, she's got red hair in this pompadour, and she is, oh, she's just a tough girl. She's great in this part. <laughs> Judy is vulnerable and wonderful and just the star that she always was. Her energies are so, so concentrated in this. And the production numbers, the, George, uh, George Sidney had also went on to direct Showboat and he directed Kiss Me Kate. He had a good feel for large ensembles. On the, in the end of the Atchison, Topeka and the Santa Fe, the whole town is out and they're all singing as the train is pulling out. Then you pull And they do this thing at the end, which I always loved at MGM with Judy, where she'd hold the last number, Santa Fe, you know, she's singing and the camera zooms in as if to say, ladies and gentlemen, Judy Garland. So Johnny, ladies and gentlemen, the Harvey girls, who's Judy Garland? Let's all go to the lobby. I... Let's all go to the lobby. <laughs> Let's all go to the lobby.